The housing starts with a solid block of aluminium, which will be cut following computer-generated models. Traditional rotary engines have an oblong-shaped housing and a triangular rotor that spins within. This new design is just the opposite. Computerized tools form the triangular housing, creating combustion chambers on the inside and cooling fins on the outside. The hollow crankshaft is made from a cylinder of hardened steel. The cylinder is placed in a lathe, then a series of computer-guided tools sculpt it to form the hollow crankshaft. Because it's hollow, it will funnel air and fuel into the engine. Here, the heart of the engine, the rotor, is being milled from a piece of steel by computerized tools. Next, after the rotor is immersed in deionized water, an electrified brass wire then generates a spark to cut a ridged hole in the center. This hole will make to a gear. This is the gear that will make with that ridged hole. It's the pinion gear, but first it needs to be frozen using liquid nitrogen. This drops its temperature to minus 190 degrees Celsius, causing it to contract in size. The frozen pinion gear is then moved into position on the rotor, and then driven in to a specific depth using a press. As the pinion gear warms to room temperature, it expands back to its original size, setting it firmly in the rotor. Here the engine seal is being machined. It's being cut out of a piece of cast iron steel that's being held in a fixture. With a thickness of just a millimeter, the seal is incredibly thin but they're critical parts that will keep the rotary engine's working chambers airtight. The seals will slide between the rotor and one of the engine's chrome-plated side plates. Here, one such plate is being leveled and polished by an automated grinder. The side plate is then heated to cause its center bore to temporarily expand. A bearing is then inserted into the bore and as the side plate cools, the bore contracts to tightly grip the bearing. This rotary engine has 10 times fewer components than in a comparable piston engine. It's now time to assemble the engine. First, the crankshaft is inserted into the side cover. A ring gear is then slid into place. The crankshaft is revolved to ensure it runs smoothly. Next, the rotor, now fitted with one of the seals, is slid onto the crankshaft. And then, the housing is fitted. The rotation of the rotor is then tested. Here you can see that as it turns, it forms chambers in which the combustion cycle will take place. A bearing and counterweight are then slid onto the shaft, followed by a bell mouth. The exhaust cover has three ports to discharge gases and one in the center through which the bell mouth protrudes, to which an engine intake adapter is attached. Once complete, a dynamometer runs the engine and measures its performance. Capable of running on a variety of fuels, this new rotary engine is now ready to power ahead. Assuming you don't spin.